Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we've been taking a closer look at the works of mercy, first the corporal works and now the spiritual. Today, the second spiritual work of mercy, counseling the doubtful. To understand what's meant by this work of mercy, we should start by looking at the two key words in it, counsel and doubtful, and see what each one implies. The word counsel in this context means to give advice. It's about offering a person whatever wisdom you can for dealing with the situation they're in. The word doubtful is referring to a person, and a very specific type of person. It refers to a person who is not unwilling to consider the truths of the faith. A person who, it seems, wishes to believe, but nevertheless, their faith is not perfect because they have doubts. It's the sort of person who's no longer totally ignorant of the faith, but they're also not quite ready to live a life of faithfulness to God. Now, it should be clear that in order to counsel anybody, you should first be the sort of person who they can trust. A friend, ideally. Otherwise, no matter how good your advice is, it's unlikely to be taken to heart. However, it's possible that the person has just heard of some advice that you gave to others and sincerely wants advice from you as well. Try to judge whether the person sincerely wants advice before giving it. As we said in the last episode, we're under no obligation to waste words on closed ears. The other important thing is to make sure you give good advice. Sometimes if the advice that's needed is on a subject that you're not familiar with, it's perfectly legitimate to say you'll call or email them back and then go study the subject first before offering any advice. Finally, it's important to remember that the purpose of counseling the doubtful is to help them get rid of their doubts. Counseling a doubtful person is not an act of mercy if your intention is to make them doubt more often. Doubt is one thing if you have good reasons to doubt a specific claim. If the evidence against a certain claim is greater than the evidence for it, it's honest to disbelieve it. However, the truths of the faith aren't like that, and no one ever brought anything good into the world by refusing to believe what is clearly true. The sooner we can rid ourselves of irrational doubt, the better. Next, when should we admonish sinners? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.